Hello there all and welcome to the FinTech Leadership Podcast. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jack Terrell, uh, one of the recruitment consultants here at MCS Group, specialising in financial technology recruitment. Um, look, feel free to tune in over the next few while as I meet with senior members of a ver- variety of different organisations um, to talk about their journey so far um, within the, the, the world of FinTech. Um, today, I've got the pleasure of welcoming uh, Ignacio Collis, uh, who's the founder of ARM, uh, which stands for Automated Regulatory Monitoring. Um, and I'll let him tell you more about who they are and what they do next. Good afternoon, Ignacio. Thanks very much for joining me. It's lovely to have you on. Thank you. Good stuff. Um, I suppose just to sort of get stuck into question one then. Um, Ignacio, could, could you share some insights into um, the history of your company um, and perhaps actually shed some light on you know your personal journey uh, as well? Yeah, sure, of course. Um, where to begin to, um, so, um, I guess like a little bit of of background of how we came up with, with ARM, right? So, um, at the time, like long ago already, I was working as a, as a consultant, helping private equity firms that were acquiring loan portfolios, uh, to make sure that they were complying with the U S regulations at the time I was living in, in New York. Um, so. At the time, like um, AI, Gen AI, it was just like a dream. Everything okay. was massively manual. So we had to go through mortgage information uh, one by one. Um, so these private equity firms were acquiring huge, massive loan portfolios, um, like 3 million. And we could only look at a few of them mm-hmm. manually, which... Uh, <laughs> It was like a lot of hours from yeah. a lot of consultants, but in the end, we only look through 300 loans, right? So we then had to extrapolate from 300 loans and say, okay, so these 3 million uh, loans portfolio is compliant with regulations. So that's one of the pieces, right? Like very manual stuff. We can only look at uh, very few cases and extrapolate to massive uh, loan portfolios. So we saw a problem there. Um, The second problem uh, that we saw there is that people that you would think were financially solid were um, getting behind in their mortgage payments. Um, And that was because there were certain life events or health issues that were impacting those um, those borrowers. Uh, some examples were um, someone lost their job, but uh, the uh, were people having health issues. So that was the second problem that we were looking at um, uh, when we were looking at loan portfolios. So we started to think about two things. Okay, how can we expand um, our auditing to the entire portfolio. And number two, how can we identify people that is vulnerable uh, for, but but they are still solid, right? Someone that is going through a health issue and can't work for three, four, five, six months, but they have a solid um, background, education, a job, et cetera, et cetera, they are solid. They, they should pay their mortgage. It's just that uh, banking institutions, they need to um, update the, the terms of, of the loan and just help those customers repay their loans. So th- th- those were the two things that led us to ARM. Um, so when, when we started with ARM, we saw an opportunity in, in, in finance, but um, we expanded to other industries okay. um, and the example today is we thought okay let's try to give the opportunity to people in uh, vulnerable situations to prove that they're vulnerable so they can get huge discounts uh, from their water company and their electricity company which could amount to thousand pounds per year and a hundred uh, or more than a hundred per month, which is like a huge difference yeah, for, for vulnerable customers. Um, so yeah, that that's more or less like the 
the journey that we had uh, first identifying, okay, there's there's a problem here. I think we can solve it. And then um, even though we started looking at the problem uh, for financial firms, we saw that we could expand it to other industries and help other or other type of clients. Okay, fantastic. Um, and what about, I suppose, you know, your own personal journey, you know, from consultant to, you know, founder of a business? Um, you know, how did you find that transition as such? So I, 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 I actually didn't find it really hard. Um, so I used to work in uh, in big organizations um, uh, and in smaller, like, well, small teams in big organizations. So okay. I worked for a huge financial firm, but I was like in a very small team looking at electricity swaps. So okay. I had the good things about um, working in a small team, uh, which gave me the opportunity to be very entrepreneurial within the company. Okay. Uh, but at very the same good. time, I saw um, the bad side of working in a big organization, which is, uh, it is highly bureaucratic. You mm -hmm. have to convince a lot of people uh, to do something. And even when you convince a lot of people, then every single step uh, along the journey is very slow. And again, mm -hmm. you have to get reapprovals from everyone. Um, so moving from consulting um, to becoming an, an entrepreneur, I think it was easy for me okay. um, in terms of how to work, the, the way of work. I actually liked it, right? Like, okay, if we yeah. think to do something, it was very flexible instead of like going through like a huge bureaucratic uh, ladder. Mm -hmm. uh, what it's really challenging, right, is you, you move personally from a very stable situation yeah. Um, to one where you had, like, it's a very stressful situation because number one, you you, you personally, you're not in such a stable um, situation. We, we raised some funds, but still it's far from uh, from the situation you would uh, have when, when you're working as a, at a financial firm yeah. or as a consultant. But at the same time, people that you convince to go on board with you and turn on, turn out, um, or turn off other jobs, other mm -hmm. better paid jobs to come along with you. They're depending on you, and that puts on a lot of stress. Um, yeah. So, good things. It is flexible. Uh, everything you think like that, you can move on. Uh, you can do it really quick. But at the same time, it comes at a at a cost, and like uh, it, it is very stressful uh, because people, you, you, even you depend on you yeah no i appreciate that and i suppose the people that you know you'd mentioned there that are alongside you you know at least the good thing is you know, you're going to be with each other on this you know journey um you know as as you guys as you guys do progress and grow um which is which is obviously a, another plus um in terms of then i suppose you know unique selling points of arm and how you might distinguish yourself um from other companies doing you know, a similar thing. I mean, what, what, what might some of those things be? Yeah, definitely. There's, there's just like literally one, one big difference is just, uh, let's call it like we're a one-stop shop. Uh, okay. We can access uh, data sources that no one can access, uh, okay. right? So if you were uh, um, a company and uh, you're trying to identify a vulnerable customer, you will need to look at uh, a lot of different um, uh, data providers. So you will have okay. the equipment of the world. You will have the experience of the world. Then you will need to go to uh, people sharing uh, bankruptcy files, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we just collate all that information in just one centralized vulnerability passport. Um, okay. And I think the biggest addition to that uh, database is uh, we can collect always with the customer consent. We can collect um, information from any HS. Um, so we don't share that information. We just yeah. have a flag system. We always try to protect as much as possible the client. Uh, so uh, instead of like, uh, if you think about like sharing um, 
health data with a utility firm to get um, into social tariff, they would need to go to their doctor, ask them to sign a letter uh, saying, okay, this customer has this health condition. Then they have to submit that letter to the utility company and someone needs to read that letter and confirm that you're vulnerable. Yeah. That is a piece of very sensitive information moving along, right? Yeah, so what yeah. we would do is we would access NEHS, we just filter through the data, and with a flag system, we would say, okay, yes, this vulnerable customer has certain um, health condition that will make him eligible for social tariff. And that's it. No uh, sensitive information would move along. Excellent. Okay. Um, could which, you elaborate? Which in in oh, essence, sorry. it protects always the customer, which is our focus. But yeah. uh, an additional positive or an additional benefit is that it also protects the company uh, because yeah. the companies, they get um, cyber attacks every single minute uh, and they don't want to get, um, they don't want to store sensitive information that could be leaked. Right. Yeah. Um, so in a sense, sense, it's protecting not only the customer, but it's also protecting the company. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, could you elaborate for us on the technologies currently employed at ARM, um, and maybe shed a bit of light in terms of you know ongoing or you know upcoming projects and things that you guys will be will be working on on a daily basis as such. I think the the, the most advanced piece of technology that we've developed is our proprietary proprietary um ai model uh so yeah we access a lot of different databases um but we also have a model to uh proactively identify any signs of vulnerability even right. before the customer becomes vulnerable yeah uh, so yeah. if you can imagine with the source of information that we are looking at um and uh we are removing health issues from there um, not not health issues, sorry. We're removing the health data from there. Um, we're looking at a lot of different um, data sources. And with that information, we classify customers across four main different uh, flags. So it could be, right. okay, this customer uh, shows signs of financial vulnerability, mm -hmm. but also life events like it may be that uh, they're struggling with um, with some health issues because, well, um, the model has like a reasoning behind why we think those guys may be at risk of uh, health issues or mental health issues, or um, even if they may have certain cognitive um, uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, so it gives uh, companies, uh, a, a flag system, not a flag system, but like a preemptive uh, or proactive approach to identify vul vulnerable customers to provide a solution before there's actual, there is an actually n negative impact in, mm -hmm. in, in their finances. So for instance, yeah. in the case of utilities, um, if you can identify, okay, there's, there's some risk with this client it seems that it may be um, a health issue. You can proactively, before they uh, fall behind their monthly billings, you can proactively approach that client and tell them, hey, do you know about social tariff? Do you know about water sewer schemes that will cut your bill by half? So that way you would be helping the vulnerable customer yeah. to prevent uh, falling behind their monthly, monthly yeah, installments. Okay, fantastic. And for our sort of technologists that might be watching this, you know, what about in terms of maybe like, you know, tech stack and things like that for your engineering team? And um, what, what might that look like for, for you guys? Uh, in terms of tech stack, um, I mean, uh, so so we, we're working um, uh, in terms of... Uh, so in terms of tech stack, so we work with AWS uh, okay. for certain... Uh, pieces of the work, but mostly we've in-house, we've developed our own model, uh, okay, which great. is outside of AWS. Uh, so we're, we're combining both cloud computing for very basic uh, functions where okay. we saw it was um, 
commercially cheaper, uh, okay. Okay. more efficient sometimes, um, yeah. most of the times. But the core of our technology, it's been um, based on uh, uh, deep AI technologies yeah. um, and in house. That, that, that part, it, we always keep uh, that in house. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fantastic. Um, Mr. Rudrick, looking ahead, you know, what are the, the upcoming plans then for the business? And uh, maybe you would like to share some. Um, obstacles that you've encountered so far, or uh, maybe perhaps some obstacles you're going to anticipate encountering, you know, in the in the coming months or years. So I think that's the most interesting piece of where we are at the moment. So um, I think the, the the biggest challenge for a startup uh, when you are working with a B two B business model is that sales, especially if you're um, working with sensitive information it is that the sales process is very very slow because you need to con you need to convince a lot of people right mm -hmm. uh, you need to convince uh, the, uh, the, the, the 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 team that is going to work with your solution but also in our case you also need to convince IT that you're safe and secure then you need to explain what's the benefit to the finance team which in the in the end they're they're going to be the ones paying the bill right yeah um, so we saw that in a b2b business model the sales process is very slow no matter how good you are no matter how efficient you are at burning stages in the sales process now where we're heading is okay we got a good um we, we're, we're very well positioned now with some partnerships with um, online banking platforms. Okay, great. Um, and we're reselling through them. Now, where we think we can, um, what we think we it, that can help us grow faster and it is going directly to the consumer, right? So, okay. yeah, of course. Uh, thinking about developing something like a an application that the vulnerable customer could download on their phone just to say, okay, yes, I want to get a vulnerability passport with ARM so they can share it with my water company, my electricity company, and my bank yes. for this and that reason. So yeah. that way, they instead of like the companies trying to proactively reach out to vulnerable clients, which Let's, let's face it, it's really difficult for companies. Yeah, They're trying to do the right thing. Uh, trust me, I've been talking with water companies, with electricity companies. I know there's a lot of bad, <laughs> there are a lot of bad news in the media, but I've, I've talked with them. They're trying to do the right things. It's just like, it's really difficult to reach out to vulnerable customers, to identify yeah. vulnerable customers, right? So if we can put yeah, that, uh, if we can make it easier for the vulnerable customers mm -hmm. to share that information with the companies they want to share, that will be a complete, a massive difference. And yeah. it will actually help uh, companies to get information from vulnerable customers and help those vulnerable customers. And for vulnerable customers, it will be great because they would be able to select the type of information they want to share with mm -hmm. each of the different companies uh, so they can get the benefits from, um, from uh, sharing that information with those companies. Yeah, 100%. Perfect. Final thing for me then. Um, what advice you know, do you have for other people in a similar situation? Um, maybe they're you know, trying to kickstart their own startup um, based on you know, your experiences that, that you've had so far. Huh. That's going to be um, perhaps a different one, but um, don't be afraid of failing fast. So don't stick to... Uh, when you see that things are not moving, uh, things are not not working. Yeah, try to pivot, try to change things, uh, but don't stick to it uh, for a long time. So, for instance, we had a partnership with a company. Uh, we we with we both were were trying to um, get the best out of it, but things were yeah. moving slowly because um, our I think uh, our our strategies were not fully aligned, okay. uh, and we tack to it because we work with them really hard to get to that partnership uh but it, it wasn't working and i think we lost uh, 
a lot of efforts, a lot of months focusing on something that it wasn't working instead of refocusing on other things that we did later that work much, much better. Um, yeah, so, yeah, if, if you try things like entrepreneurship and, and, uh, and, 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 and startup, it's just like trying new things. Don't stick for too long for the thing, on the things that are not working because that is a cost of opportunity on focusing of, on, on things that will work. Perfect. Well, that's great. I guess, uh, I guess someone uh, uh, say it in like a very negative way, but I, I think it's really positive. Don't don't be afraid of failing fast. That's yeah. that's the best thing like an, an entrepreneur could, can do, um, because it it will give you an answer about something like okay, this is not working. Let's let's do, let's try something different. Hundred percent. I think that's great advice. Um, well, that, I suppose that's that's all for me. Um, the final thing I wanted to say was just thanks very much for for hopping on and, and sharing your insights and uh, walking us through um, ARM. Um, I'm personally looking forward to seeing, I suppose, how you how you guys grow 